So now we're going to cover the last subclade of the excavatas, with our, which are protus, and we'll entitle this next flowchart excavata2, and we'll subtitle this flowchart with the final clade to understand within the excavata, which are a type of protus, which are a type of eukaryote, um, and that is the euglenozoans. Euglenozoans. So these are a very, very diverse subclade of excavatas of protus in general. They're very, very diverse. It's a key theme of all protists. A very diverse clade. Uh, their main morphological feature is the following. Main morphological, and that just means their main shape feature, their main uh, shape, their characteristic that makes them look the way that they look is the following. Uh, feature is uh, within their flagella they actually have a spiral slash crystalline rod within it. Spiral crystalline rod. That's something I would remember about these guys. Spiral crystalline rod inside each flagella. Inside each flagellum. So that would mean when you say uh, each flagellum, they probably have more than one flagellum. A lot of them do. Some of them don't. Um, definitely look at the figure in your textbook that I'll refer to in just a bit. So we have a spiral crystalline rod stuck inside the flagella. Um, very, very uh, defining characteristic seen here. Uh, it makes mucleinozoans very easy to spot when you look at them under a microscope. Now, the two types of euglenozoans to remember, uh, which are euglenozoans themselves, are a type of excavata, which are a type of protus, which are a type of eukaryo. The two types of euglenozoans you should remember are the following. Kinetoplastids. There's a part of this word, this term, that you should already uh, know about, the plastid section. Um, and also the euglenids, which we'll do over here after the kinetoplastids. Euglenids. The kinetoplastids are, again, this is something we do constantly, characterized by a large mitochondria, a true mitochondria. We're no longer in the world of a reduced mitochondria, but now we have a large, true mitochondria. And within the mitochondria, inside the mitochondria, inside mito, is a kinetoplast, thus the name kinetoplastids. So there's a structure stuck within, within the mitochondria, this true and large mitochondria, and it would make sense that this large mitochondria has the capability of holding something called the kinetoplast within it. What is a kinetoplast? A kinetoplast is simply going to be defined as an organized mass of DNA. Organized mass of DNA. Again, very easy to observe underneath the microscope because we're looking at such a large mitochondria, and that large mitochondria houses this kinetoplast region, which is just some DNA. Now, in terms of the structure of kinetoplasts and what they do in their lives, we've defined excavatas so far as mostly parasitic, but in the kinetoplast story, we actually have some that are free-living. They don't need to be stuck to a host all the time and taking away resources from the host. But there are, of course, some that are parasitic as well. Again, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to constantly be saying some, usually, sometimes. Uh, these are terms that are just used in protist study because not all of them fit underneath one umbrella. They are very, very diverse, this entire group of organisms. And again, our example to remember, we need to remember the examples especially, um, is the following. This one is called trypanosoma, and we'll spell this out hopefully correctly, trypanosoma brucei. And uh, I want you guys to notice something in terms of classification uh, that we learned in the first lecture of Bio 2. Um, I'm always capitalizing the first letter of the genus and lower casing, the second letter, the first letter of our species, okay? So this is a, a common convention that you should get used to. Um, and the one thing to know about Trypanosoma brucei, it's a kinetoplast, um, and it causes African sleeping sickness. It causes African sleeping sickness. And in order to better understand that, I suggest looking at figure 
28.7. This will give us a much better idea of what the kinetoplasts look like and their relevancy to us in terms of African sleeping sickness. Um, African sleeping sickness, just broadly speaking, um, is a neurological disease. Um, that is usually transmitted through a vector, a vector-borne disease, such as uh, a fly bite. And that fly bite will eventually uh, transfer this kinetoplastid onto the individual that just got bit, and they will get African sleeping sickness. So that's our kinetoplast story. Let's remember, kinetoplasts are a type of euglenozoan. Euglenozoans are a type of excavata. Excavata are a type of protus, and a protus are a type of eukaryote. Okay, good. So we have a good stepwise structure that we just went through. Let's look at the euglenids. Euglenids are uh, well established and seen in figure 28.8, something I suggest you look at. Euglenids, again, let's do this one more time, characterized by what makes them euglenids, what makes them different than all the other euglenozoans. They are characterized by one or two one or two flagella from, um, that are just uh, ex uh, extending outside of the cell. From uh, one or two flagella, let's write that down, flagella from pocket at one end of cell. From pocket at one end of cell. Um, this does this uh, characterization a, a great injustice by putting it into words. I say just looking at the actual figure to really see um, the specialization necessary for two flagella to be, one or two flagella to be coming out of this pocket structure at the end of this cell. And uh, an interesting thing to note about euglenids, we have our first example, true example of a protist that uh, have some of them, at least some of course, are mixotrophic. Not all, but some common theme in protist study. Some are mix mixotrophic, and we remember mixotrophy is just when you have the capability of going through photosynthesis or heterotrophic uh, needs or heterotrophic eating habits based off of the environment, whatever is necessary at the time. So that covers our excavata. Um, just to quickly summarize what we've studied in these uh, past two videos. We started with eukaryotes, and then we established that eukaryotes uh, have this subgroup known as the protus, and protus have this clade known as the excavata. So let's, let me rewrite that. They have this clade known as the excavata, and within excavata, we have three subdivisions known as the diplomonads, which we covered. We also have the parabasalids, which we covered in a previous video, and then uh, in this video that we did right now, we covered the euglenozoans, and the euglenozoans have two subdivisions to remember, and those are the kinetoplastids, which I'll just write down as the KPs, and the euglenids. Okay, that's a big, uh, broad summary of what we did. Be able to understand and uh, remember uh, the key characterizations of each of these, uh, of the larger groups, and the examples that we've mentioned.